This is your daily dose of all things royal. My fellow New Yorkers, this is a city built on innovation and technology, a place where we celebrate progress and look to the future. But even as we have created jobs, opportunity, and prosperity with new technology, there have been unforeseen consequences and new dangers, especially when it comes to social media's effect on the mental health of our young people. Over the past decade, we have seen just how addictive and overwhelming the online world can be, exposing children to content they are not ready for, disrupting the educational process, and seriously damaging their self-esteem and well-being. Our most recent data found that young people in New York City are experiencing anxiety, hopelessness, and even attempted suicide at rates we have never seen before. And there is growing evidence that the power of social media is a major cause. This is a serious problem that must be addressed now. That is why earlier this morning, our administration filed a lawsuit against the companies that own five major social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, and YouTube. As we announced last month in the State of the City Address, we must take action to protect our children from harm online, including the growing dangers presented by social media. Together, the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, New York City Health and Hospitals, and the New York City Department of Education, we are filing litigation today demanding that companies be held accountable for their platform's damaging influence on the mental health of our young people. And we're seeking to recover the cost of addressing this ongoing public health threat as well. How much you want to bet that Meghan and Harry are going to have something to say about this and figure out a way to attach themselves to this lawsuit as they did with the one in California? What appears to be happening now, since the censorship industrial complex has been exposed, is the targeting of children and using mental health as the backdoor in to get the access that they're looking for, which, when you look through this lawsuit, it's about the researchers and giving access to those researchers and helping to get this kid's online safety bill passed into legislation. Now, I'm not surprised that New York is the one taking on this initiative. We have Beaverface Hojil, who's saying that kids need to be inoculated with the right information. And here we have Mayor Adams pushing this aggressively. Why? Because Chuck Schumer is the Democrat senator here who has the poll in the Senate House. You guys need to understand that this is not about the children. This is about getting the backdoor access into being able to invade people's privacy so they can see what you're saying and making sure that it is not wrong thing. In addition, they also want to be able to control the information that's going to your children. So making sure that they only have one source of truth. And this is where we're getting to. And quite frankly, I'm sick and tired of seeing these Democrats pretend that they care so much about the kids when they are right now facilitating the largest human trafficking operation in history. How can they say that they care about kids when you have all these undocumented children coming through the border without any kind of tracking or tracing? And I knew something smelled funny last year when Meghan and Harry were doing their summit here for World Mental Health Day here in New York with the Surgeon General. Of course, the Surgeon General is all over this lawsuit with all his research and findings and what the Biden administration is saying about clamping down on social media. I mean, honestly, you don't think that when this mental health summit was going on in New York with Kamala Harris's husband and the Surgeon General, that the mayor and also other government officials weren't talking about this and trying to finalize the details in this lawsuit. This lawsuit is over 300 pages long, so of course it took a few months to get together. These Democrats are so ruthless and will stop at nothing to curb information. 
Here we have Vivek Murthy, who is all over this lawsuit with his research when he's being listed in the Missouri versus Biden lawsuit. He has been a part of trying to censor people in this Biden regime. I did a video on this a while back. You might want to check that out to see how he has been involved with this administration and, you know, the shadiness around it. Now we have Meghan and Harry who have aligned with this guy. Let's all keep in our minds that anyone that Meghan and Harry are aligned with have to be questioned because they have turned out to be absolutely shady and dodgy. These people know that whoever gets to control the algorithms gets to control the flow of information. This is what Meghan and Harry want. And all those that align with Meghan and Harry, aka these Democrats in this administration. So now what we're seeing is the government getting involved with how your children should be using the internet, how long they should be on the internet. Parents everywhere can see for themselves that their children are spending too much time online. New York City teens spend an average of three hours or more per day in front of screens, not including time spent on schoolwork. Much of it focused on the endless stream of social media that has been designed with one goal in mind keeping the user engaged for as long as possible. Adults find it hard enough to moderate the use of social media, but it's even more difficult for our young people. We know these platforms are designed with addictive and dangerous features that take advantage of a child's natural interest in novelty and play. The social on these platforms, the likes, the trophies, the streaks, are designed to manipulate a dopamine release in the brain. And children lack the maturity and impulse control to continually regulate their use. Instead of talking to each other over lunch at the cafeteria, they're absorbed in their screens. Instead of playing at the park with friends, they are inside on a sunny day clicking and scrolling. And instead of learning confidence and resilience, they are being exposed to content that often leads to insecurity and depression. The feature that keep young people clicking in these dark corners of social media have fueled an alarming rise in online bullying, depression, eating disorders, and suicidal ideation. Social media can damage self-esteem, promote addiction, and often encourages reckless behavior like subway surfing and car theft challenges. We have also seen a dangerous rise in misinformation, xenophobia, radicalization, and incitement to hateful acts. And even young people astonishingly declaring that Osama bin Laden was right as they rack up likes online. Instead of connecting people to one another, our social media companies initially promised their platforms to often tear us apart. These companies are well aware that negative, frightening, and outrageous content generates continued engagement and greater revenue. Children who start watching an online video for a school assignment often find that algorithms keep playing other videos, potentially taking them down a rabbit hole that is inappropriate, hateful, and even dangerous, a place that never even meant to go. There is, of course, a great deal of education and positive content out there too, but there is also a 24 seven digital dystopia that even very young children can easily access without parents or caregivers ever being aware. The harm from social media is particularly critical in our schools with students Addictive social media use is disrupting the learning environment on a daily basis. Teachers are burned out from dealing with students' phones use and the fallout from online bullying, leading to lost instructional time and low morale. That is why New York City is joining hundreds of school districts from across the country in filing this litigation to protect our children. Measuring the true impact of social media is difficult because companies often limit access to their data. But Frances Haugen, a whistleblower who went public with her experiences working at Facebook, 
said that the company had internal findings that showed that 32% of teen girls said that they felt bad about their bodies. And Instagram even made them feel worse. Internal TikTok documents reveal that more than 20% of children are active on the platform between midnight and 5 a.m. when they should be sleeping. In recent years, there was a 40% increase in high school students reporting persistent sadness and hopelessness. Emergency room visits for anxiety disorders are up 117%. And nationwide, suicidal rates for youth are up an alarming 57%. These are not just numbers. These are our children. And this is not a reality we can accept or normalize. We are facing a serious youth mental health crisis. And it is up to us as parents, as city, and as a society to take action, not just to improve academics or build social skills, but to save lives. Because if we don't stand up to powerful companies on behalf of our young people, who will? These companies must change their behavior and their business practices and join us in building a better society for all. We know our tech community can and must be part of the solution. But the path forward starts with a firm commitment to prioritizing the health of the many over the profits of a few. We came into office two years ago with a clear mission to protect public safety, and public safety includes protecting the mental health of our young people. We do all we can to keep our children safe from gun violence, drugs, and climate change and make sure they have access to education, health care, and all the services that they need. Now, we must support families fighting the harmful effects of unregulated social media. Just as we protect them from air pollution and other environmental dangers, that is why Dr. Fassan issued a Health Commissioner's Advisory last month, declaring social media a public health hazard, and why we are filing this lawsuit today. New York is the first major American city to take combined steps of this magnitude and call out the danger of social media clearly and directly, just as the Surgeon General did with tobacco and guns. We are treating social media like other public health hazards. We are following up the advisory with this lawsuit to ensure that tech companies take responsibility for the impact of their products. Not only do we aim to hold TikTok, Meta, Snapchat, and YouTube accountable for their role in creating the youth mental health crisis in New York City by purposefully manipulating and addicting children and teens to social media applications, but we seek to hold them financially responsible for what they cost our city year after year. We spend over $100 million on youth mental health programs each year alone, even as these corporations reap billions of dollars of profit at the cost of young people's emotional, mental, and physical health. Young New Yorkers have told us about wanting to have a healthier relationship with social media and wanting to spend more time offline connecting with friends, but they need help. That is why today we're also releasing our social media action plan, which will help us chart a new course forward in several key areas. First, we are advocating for state and federal policymakers to put in place laws that require social media companies to ensure that their platforms are safe for youth mental health. Second, we will be providing media literacy and education to support our young people and families. This includes promoting tech-free zones to encourage young people to socialize in person. And finally, our action plan will study the long-term impacts of social media on our youth to understand how New York City can better address the harm caused by these platforms. 
tech companies should agree to share their data with us and open their books to independent research as part of that effort. These companies have been a partner here in New York City, but friends need to be honest with one another. We know that some have begun working to tackle these issues. While we welcome those efforts, this entire industry must do far more. We must have enforceable and agreed upon standards, not a patchwork of voluntary fixes that ultimately shifts the burden right back to parents, teachers, and young people. Our children, our families, and our future are more important than that and more important than profit. That is why we are taking bold actions on behalf of millions of New Yorkers, an important step in a larger reckoning that will shape the lives of our young people, our city, and society for years to come. And what this boils down to is pushing legislation that is going to affect everyone, not just the youth. It's going to affect all of us. This is the Trojan horse to get in here. So by taking this action and first step, this is going to help the Democrats, especially in the Senate, be able to push that first bill, which is that kids online safety bill. I think there's so many other ways that this could be addressed, like the social media companies putting a firm ban on access to kids that are under 14 years old. That, I think, would be a reasonable thing, as well as the parents stepping in and doing their job. The government should not be dictating how many hours your child should be online and, and watch what your child is doing and saying online, I think, is a gross invasion of privacy. And it's not just on social media. It's going to be pervasive, whether it be in communication from, let's say, if you're on WhatsApp or texting someone. I mean, this is what's going on with these regulations all around the world. It's that access to seeing the communication flow. And that's ultimately what these researchers want, because we've seen how these researchers have taken this information and influenced policy. And this is why Rene DiResta and Stanford University are all getting sued, because this is how the government is bypassing Americans' First Amendment rights by using, by proxy, these third parties. Trust me, this is not about the kids. This is all about that control. And they can't do it the way that they were doing it because it's been exposed. So what are they doing? They're now focusing on the mental health. You don't think that there was suicidal ideation before social media? Absolutely. You don't think that there was eating disorders before so social media? Absolutely. You don't think there was bullying before social media? Absolutely. So what we're noticing now is more and more discussion around the mental health of the youth. You notice that? So here we have this lawsuit that's now popped up, which is going to take on national headlines, maybe even global headlines, when Meghan and Harry jump on this bandwagon or attach themselves to this lawsuit. We're going to see the focus on putting pressure on these social media companies, as well as convincing the Senate now that this kid's online safety bill is a great idea, knowing that this is truly a Trojan horse. And, you know, if anything that has taught us about Meghan and Harry is that they are the two most morally corrupt people and they don't just do things for the goodness of mankind. They do things because there's something in it for them. And with that, the ability the objective here, since the censorship industrial complex has been exposed, is now targeting the youth. And you notice that Megan and Harry have been investing into a lot of things that involve the youth and mental health. These are things that we need to pay attention to, not the distraction with the stupid website. You know, Megan and Harry are about as transparent as they can be with everything else except for the things that really matter, which is this kind of stuff, which affects your rights. Remember, Megan would like to control what everybody says about her. And so does Harry. These two dictators, as I've said before, are extremely dangerous when they're not saying the things that they are doing, which is this kind of stuff. So I'll leave you with that. Um, I do see this as a red flag. And we have a Democrat state going ahead and pushing this because we have Chuck Schumer, who is all on board with passing this re regulation in the Senate. Um, yeah, this is all calculated, calculated campaign.
And this lawsuit right now is going to be interesting to watch and see how it unfolds. Personally, I think that, you know what? We've proven that we can't handle social media. It's about time, like maybe Facebook and all these other companies realize that, you know what, if we truly care about the kids, then just outright ban it entirely for a certain age and make it accessible to people over 18 and be done with it. But we know that underlying it, it's getting that access so that they wouldn't do that. Of course, they're not going to put the regulation to ban it outright for kids, which is what I think they should ultimately do if we're really serious about controlling the information and getting back to kids going outside and playing, just ban it. We don't need all this regulation around it. But that's just my thoughts. What do you guys think? You know, definitely leave your thoughts on this one. I'd be interested to seeing how you feel about this. Anyhow, I will be back with more content. But until then, please be safe and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Such a broad. <laughs>